Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering the AWS Accenture Executive Summit. Brought to you by Accenture. Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage of the AWS Executive Summit. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight. We have two guests for this segment. We have Tani Crefield, she is the Managing Director, Communications, Media, and High Tech at Accenture, and Adam Burden, Chief Software Engineer at Accenture. Thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. Happy to be here. So we Thank are you. talking today about the future of platforms, and Adam, I'm going to start with you to just sort of give our viewers a lay of the land here. It's been, it's been a few years since platform development really hit sure. the scene. Um, so it's been an interesting space for, for us as, as well. Um, when I talk about what's happening in this area, I kind of I like to break it up into the, the how, uh, the now, and the wow. Uh, and the, the how is, is really what's, what's, what is created or enabled by these platforms. It really is abstracting away the complexity, this plumbing and, and difficult parts of building uh, software bespoke and uh, systems and it's making that complexity sort of disappear so that the real effort is expended upon building systems and, and enabling business value. Uh, and when we, when we talk about uh, how that uh, has changed the way that we look at systems integration and development, uh, it's actually enabling this thing that we call the renaissance of custom to, to a degree. Um, and that is, that's really kind of the, the how. And in the now side of this, uh, it's, it's interesting, the, you know, uh, when we first started uh, tracking this space, these platform areas, I want to say it was close to eight, eight years ago, we actually called it the, uh, the Helen of Troy effect, right? So we had uh, the face that, that launched a thousand ships. There literally were a thousand uh, platforms uh, out there floating around in the ocean, uh, and some of them had a lot of sailors on it, and a few of them were just dinghies, but uh, now what we're seeing happen uh, is, this, is this consolidation Mm -hmm. uh, of, of platforms, and, and it's taken a, a couple of different forms. Sometimes you've got something like one of these, these really popular open source platforms like Cloud Foundry, um, and it's, uh, it's actually uh, becoming sort of an OEM product inside of a lot of other platforms. So you see Cloud Foundry now uh, inside of things like SAP Cloud Platform, uh, for example. Uh, so it's popping up in surprising places, plus you can also use the community version. Um, but that consolidation is, is now sort of channeling down the number of platform options, uh, environments that are available to build things on top of. So that's a very interesting uh, development that's happening right now. And the wow is what's happening you know, tomorrow. And I, I tell you, I see some remarkable things on the horizon working with our ecosystem partners uh, that, that really will change the, the way that, that clients uh, and businesses, the enterprises, especially the ones that have ambitions to be the high performers of tomorrow, how they're going to enable uh, business applications and systems for their customers. And we talk about things like low code and no code platforms. Imagine a scenario where you can talk uh, to an intelligent agent and describe the system that you want to build and the scaffolding for that is created for you. So really remarkable advances and leaps forward coming ahead in the platform space. And you know, when I think about the, you know, the how and how we've gotten here, the now and the wow, it's just an exciting time uh, to be working in this area. So what are some of the, the primary benefits? As you said, you're talking to clients who want to become the high performers of tomorrow. Yep. What kind of successes are you seeing? So I would really group that into, into probably two things, Rebecca. I, I think uh, the first one is around agility. Um, you know, one of the things I like to say um, is that the, uh, the, the, the pace of technology change will never be as slow again as it is today. <laughs> and it's sort of a daunting thing. Which is mind-boggling in it itself. It is, um, it's kind of daunting. And being here you know, at AWS reInvent, we're about to be bombarded with an unprecedented number of new product and capability announcements over the next couple of days. Um, it's hard to absorb all of these things and, and hard to be able to take advantage of them. And, for our businesses and our, and our clients that we work with, they're looking for agility. And that's, that's one of the key benefits uh, that you get out of being on one of these, uh, a part of one of these platforms. It allows them to be more responsive to the market uh, and they can do it in a way um, which is really, um, it's, it's enabling them to deliver solutions faster and better than ever before. And think about the competitive threats that they're facing, right? With cloud technologies like, like AWS, we've really, we've democratized a lot of compute like never before. So 
because of that, it's a lot easier for a startup or even a company in an adjacent industry to come in and say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start doing things in this space. I'm going to sell roofing products and I'm a car manufacturer, for example. Um, and when you have things like that happening, uh, and it's so easy for competitors to get in and, and, be, and be disruptive, it's really important in the business that you can move quickly. And these platforms enable just that. So agility is clearly one of them. And then the other one is around innovation. Um, if you think about how hard it would be uh, for my colleague here, Tani and I, if we were going to build like, you know, a new customer service system that had like, um, a natural language processing and a, and a virtual agent technology in it, and we were going to try and build this in our own data center, right? Stand up the infrastructure, set up all the services, be able to do this, train the models ourselves. We're talking about something that could take months or years mm -hmm. even just to get to the point where we're ready to start building. Yet today, with a lot of these platforms, you don't have to do any of that. You can start tomorrow, and it's all as a service, it's on tap, it's on demand. And if you're taking, if you're going to be one of these high performers of tomorrow, using it as an innovation platform is absolutely a key component of the success uh, of the future for that business, no doubt. Tony, I want to bring you in here a little bit to this conversation. So talk to me about uh, a, a specific example of, of a platform that Accenture has been working on. So I'd like to highlight OpenAP. It's just a great example of what Adam was talking about where it was a consortium of media giants that came together to build a new platform really to disrupt the uh, broadcast TV industry and find a way of doing targeted advertising more effectively. So broadcast TV is usually done based on gender and age demographics, that's it. They wanted to find a way of really being more specific, targeting veterans or people who want to buy trucks or whatever. Um, and they did this by, by wanting to create a, a cloud platform that would become the marketplace between agencies and um, the broadcasters. And they, you know, but because it's a consortium, there's no infrastructure, there's no starting point. It was from thin air, from scratch. Um, and they, because of the broadcast industry timelines, they wanted to do the entire, from, from idea to, to launch uh, in five months. And we couldn't have done that if, to Adam's point, if we had to you know, create, you know, put in servers and all that stuff, we were able to do all of that because we were able to leverage AWS as a, as a baseline and get started with the development almost immediately. So, so talk a little bit more about this open AP. So it's a consortium of media companies and, and, and sort of looking at their digital competitors with a little bit of envy here of, wow, you can slice and dice your, cut, your target customers so finely and you know exactly who they are, uh, what they want to buy, what they're, right consumer proclivities are, and they, we, they wanted to be able to do the same. Right. Yeah, so, there, so there, um, there's a lot of analytics that they wanted to leverage and do it in a way that there was a, a standard across the different media companies, because they realized that you know, the biggest threat was coming from digital, not from each other. So they kind of got together and said, hey, let's find a way of doing this more frictionless, make it more seamless, we can, um, have a lot of the data and the analytics behind it so that you could target, like I said, you know, veterans or whatever. Um, and by doing so, they are able to create that marketplace. Um, but to do that, we had to really make it, you know, easy to use. We had to build, you know, custom UIs back to exactly the, the renaissance of custom. It was, there's nothing out there in the marketplace that would do this. They, ha they were the first ones in there to really disrupt the, you know, the marketplace. So it was, you know, custom UIs, you know, APIs, the whole, you know, the whole set of capabilities that needed to be done for the, for the consortium. So Adam, in terms of, in terms of th these platform services, talk a little bit about what you have learned so far and sort of the best practices that have emerged, the, the nuggets of wisdom. Oh, thanks, Rebecca. I love it when people ask me that question because <laughs> I, I have a, I, I have uh, two things that I think are really important to, to keep in mind with that. One of them is, um, that if you're building greenfield applications, right, it's, it's actually time to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Uh, and it's a bit hard uh, sometimes because there's, a, there's, a, there's uh, a, a lot of inertia uh, in enterprises about how, how you do things and how things have been done. And a lot of times they can be quite conservative too about their approaches. So for example, if you're going to use a platform um, but what you're going to do on that platform is you're going to stay using waterfall development techniques. You're going to have releases every three or six months mm -hmm. or something. That's just, 
that's not going to meet your business's expectations anymore. Uh, it goes back to what I was saying a few minutes ago about the speed of change uh, in, in technology. It's just not going to keep up with what potentially competitors are going to do. Um, so you have to throw out a lot of those, uh, that baggage that you've carried with you for a long time. A, a great example I like to talk about in this space uh, is actually site reliability engineering. This is a pattern for architecture, solving architecture problems that it really has become quite popular in the last couple of years. And what it allows you to do is to, is to release software a lot faster, but you have more circuit breakers inside of your applications that allow it to gracefully degrade if there's some sort of defect or problem that happens so that your customers, your business partners, your employees, they don't see an outage. What they see is a slightly degraded service. They don't get something where it says, you know, 404, site not available. <laughs> they get a slightly degraded service. And if you follow those patterns well, you can deliver software a lot faster with higher degrees of quality, but you have the comfort and assurance that it's going to do that. That actually helps you get over some of the cultural barriers uh, as well. Well, those cultural barriers, and I'm interested in your experience with OpenAP too, in what you just described is, is exactly right, is yeah. that there is this inertia, there is this um, enterprises, we've been doing things our way for a mm -hmm. long time mm -hmm. and they're not broke. Uh, so uh, can you talk about the challenges of having to overcome that? Yeah, I, you know, I think the, with the consortium, we had a little bit of an advantage in that it was pure greenfield, and um, we, you know, the consortium was very specific about the first pain points they wanted to focus on, and really wanted to build it as an MVP, you know, minimal viable product, not trying to do everything at once, and that was really key to us. So once we really knew what they wanted to do, we we put in all of the the dev sec ops, uh, agi agile practices, so that we could move fast. We did uh, you know, automated testing and test harnesses and, and built in the security, the scalability, the performance from the beginning so that we weren't you know, halfway down the road and then had to try to bolt that stuff in later. Right. And, and just, we, had, we really all had a vision of what we needed to get to and we were able to leverage all of the modern technology practices to get there. I'm not going to say it wasn't hard. <laughs> Five months was kind of crazy, especially because it had to be uh, ready to launch and go live. And in fact, we had a, a, a beta day, which was industry experts coming to test it, hands-on demo at uh, Paramount Studios in, in California. Like, no pressure, four months after we started, and it was awesome. <laughs> um, but, it, but it was, because we, we had the vision, and then we had all the new tooling and the technologies, and the ability to build in some of that stuff from the beginning, um, which I think in a greenfield scenario really, really helped us. Adam, final word, in terms of next year's AWS Executive Summit, what are we going to talk, talk about? We're, we're already talking about the future platforms. What is, what is going to be so next the, year's the thing, buzz? The next year's buzz, I, I, I really think that there's going to be this, this uh, momentum towards something called go native. Uh, and this is going to be, so there's a, there's a lot of, of, uh, of enterprises that are taking advantage of cloud today, um, but they're using it as, as compute, storage, and power. And, and the, um, the real value for them is going to be unlocked by taking advantage of the native services uh, that are there. And when we think about things that, that AWS reInvent um, you know, has announced in the last couple of years, and I'm sure it's going to come up this year, think about things like, like Lambda and Aurora and others. These are native cloud services that taking advantage of those and not just sort of bringing the other components of your older architecture with you, um, that will really unleash a new era of innovation for your company. You'll be able to do things faster and better, and you'll have even better outcomes for your clients, your customers, and business partners uh, than you would otherwise. So go native. Go I think native. Is okay, be the you thing heard it here year. first, folks. <laughs> Adam Tani, thank you so much for coming on theCUBE. It was great talking thank to you. you. I'm Rebecca Knight. We will have more of theCUBE's live coverage of the AWS Executive Summit coming up in just a little bit.